Air, on the surface, might seem a movie praising the capitalist system. It chronicles a company, Nike, who took a gamble on a market and reaped the rewards of it. But if you look a little closer, it is in fact a criticism of corporate America, hidden beneath the guise of the underdog story. There have been lots of movies and TV, particularly recently, that have poked fun at the well-off. Glass Onion, The White Lotus and Triangle of Sadness have all satirised the ultra-rich, deconstructing the age-old story of the successful being greedy and ruthless, yet undeniable yeah, in their competence. Fully abbreviate this moment together. Mm. However, the characters contained in these stories are extreme, and can therefore be passed off as caricatures of the upper class. Canadian upholding democracy all over the world. Mm. What product is that? Uh, basically, our best-selling product is the hand grenade. And I think to an extent that legitimises their argument, as it no longer becomes commentary on the system, but the players within it. This can be easily rebutted by pointing out, very fairly I might add, that the characters contained in these movies and television aren't truly reflective of the people they are intending to criticise. And when it's not enough to merely satirise the rich, there is a speech in which a character argues the writer's cause, their case against capitalism. Particularly in Triangle of Sadness's case, it feels so obviously motivated that it takes the viewer out of the film they are watching. War itself became our most lucrative industry. Every Which brings us to Air, a movie funded by a trillion dollar company about a billion dollar company making a billion dollar product would probably be forgiven for taking the pro-libertarian stance on capitalism. And at first glance, maybe it does. Nike, with their influential leader in Phil Knight, take on the giants of the basketball footwear industry and succeed. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon have worked with most of the best filmmakers of the last two decades. It's quite the list. Spielberg, Soderbergh, Scorsese, Fincher, Eastwood, Ridley Scott, the Coen brothers, and not forgetting who I think Affleck learned most from, Michael Bay. I asked Michael why it was easier to train oil drillers to become astronauts than it was to train astronauts to become oil drillers, and he told me to shut the fuck up. So that, that was the end of that talk. And they were accomplished writers before working with any of them, having won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay for Goodwill Hunting. I think one of the things they've learned from this wealth of experience making movies is the power of subtext. Spielberg, in particular, has always told stories that have shirked away from revealing their true meaning, preferring to explore them through metaphor. Even The Fablemans, which is almost a biographical account of his childhood, and as he puts it, his most personal film, uses metaphor. In the film, Sammy's mother's struggle between the love for her husband and father of her children, a logical and caring man, and a family friend who she seems more enamoured with, is in direct parallel to the conflict in Sammy's life. The conflict between going to college and getting a job like his father, the logical choice, or to pursue his true love of film, the love that he can't turn away from. You do what your heart says you have to, so you don't owe anyone your life. Not even me. We learn from stories, but not from their surface level. The characters in Air are not bad people. They are not driven by greed. They are not exploiting anyone, at least on screen anyway. They are united by will to create a great product, and for it to be seen around the world. The story is one of the quintessential American dream. Through hard work and an innovative business decision, the scrappy underdog manages to beat his competitors Adidas and Converse to Michael Jordan's signature. And just with that alone, it would have been a great movie. We love an underdog story, and we love stories that reinforce the belief that we are rewarded for our tenacity and sheer will. But Terra has another level lurking below that. From the athlete's perspective, their hard work on the basketball court is being used by the major sporting footwear corporations to make billions of dollars. Their image, face and name are being advertised to make these companies huge amounts of money and the athletes are being remunerated a pittance in comparison. This was the norm until Michael Jordan. Michael would not sign with Nike and promised to build a shoe around him until it was stipulated in his contract that he received a percentage of the revenue of his shoe. This is summed up perfectly by Jordan's mother who repeats Sonny Vaccaro's line back to him. A shoe is just a shoe until my son steps into it. Nike needs Jordan, but would not be the same brand it is today without him. And Dolores Jordan feels her son should be rewarded for that. 
Nike weren't doing anything out of the ordinary for the industry by not paying the athlete royalties for his shoe. Air doesn't portray the corporation or any of its members as villainous, narcissistic, or even moronic. They are good and capable people doing the right thing, trying to succeed in business. And yet if it were not for Dolores' intervention, the son would have been locked into a contract that exploited his work on the court. The point isn't that Nike are bad players, they might just be in a bad game. This is what makes Air's argument so compelling, by not needing to paint any one person or company in a bad light to get its point across. I think it achieves far more than its contemporaries such as Glass Onion and Triangle of Sadness in addressing the subject by telling a story and letting the audience come to their own conclusions about its wider implications. Writer Alex Convery, as well as Affleck and Damon, have built a great movie first and foremost. Its pacing is great, dialogue even better, and Affleck has once again proven he's a very skilled director. But under the cover of the underdog story, they might have something to say. And most admirably of all, Affleck and Damon are putting their money where their mouths are. Air marked the first release from their newly formed independent production company, Artis Equity, and aims to share profits with all stakeholders. And regardless of ideology or credence, I'm sure that that's a cause we can all get behind.